give them one good problem to work on. Right away. One problem. Second part, good problem. Doesn't have to be hard. What is a good problem? A good problem is a problem that takes what you think they know, what they did last night, what they worked on last night, what you're pretty sure they can do, and takes it to the next level. It brings in the next question. So when they look at the problem, it looks like a problem they think they can do, but they can't quite. And they work on it, and they realize there's something that's not quite right about this. And then they start talking with their neighbors about it. And then they learn something. And then you're walking around and you realize that they've got it. And you spend 20 seconds talking about it because they got it. You realize that not everybody got it. But Kathy did. And you know what? Kathy hasn't gotten many right so far. <laughs> She's a friend, so I can say that. So what am I going to do? Kathy, show us your work. Now, I might, I might also do the same thing when I know that somebody who usually gets them right has gotten it wrong. Because <laughs> I know their ego can handle it. So I'm not always going to hand the tablet or have the person explain their solution if it's somebody who gets it right, because that's a dead giveaway. It's like when you say, are you sure of your answer? Did you check your work? What are the kids here? Oh, I must have gotten it wrong. Not if you say it every time. Not if you have kids demonstrate their solution when you know it's wrong, especially if they made the mistake you know everybody's going to make. Now, I don't pick the kid who's been having trouble to do that with. And, but if a kid's been having trouble, and I see they've got it, man, I want to celebrate that. You know what? She's going to know I did that. Not a worksheet with five problems on it. Never a worksheet with five problems on it. Because then kids don't work together. They want to get the worksheet done. When you give them one problem and they get it done, then what are they going to do? Hopefully, look to the left and look to the right and see if they got the same answer as the people in their group. And talk about it and discuss it. But I don't have to tell you this. You just experienced it. The way it works. How it works. That's how it works. And then when it comes time to talk about it as a group, Everybody listens because they want to know if they got it right. And they want to know if somebody's got a better solution than them. Um, so what you do while they're working on this problem is you walk around. And you watch. And you listen. You don't stop and tutor because you see as soon as soon as I start writing something over here the rest of you I'm ignoring you so you're not gonna be on task I might say, check your work. Is that the same thing your neighbor did? If it's clear that a few people misunderstood the problem or didn't understand the problem the same way I did, I might say, oh, you can use the points more than once. If nobody had thought of the slant squared, I might have said, well, probably what I would have done is I would have just drawn one square that didn't have its sides horizontal and vertical. I wouldn't have said a word. I would have just drawn it. But, but sometimes you have to redirect. Sometimes. But, but see, you're the teacher. But you're making decisions based on knowledge of where they are and what they can do and what comes next. But there has to be a what comes next. It can't just be some problem 
that you sort of liked. It's got to be a problem that teaches. So when they get to that place where they're ready to talk about it, where they want to know about it, nobody got it. They want to know about it. They are ready to be taught. They are listening. They want to know what comes next. And you can only know that if you walk around. I have no idea why this slide is in this position. Um, and I think I'm, all, I'm out of time. This isn't going to work. But and, and the thinker, I have a statue of the thinker on a pedestal in my room. Why? Because if I'm walking around and somebody does something extraordinary, I've given mine away to my son when I retired, but I take that statue of the thinker and I walk over and I just put it on his desk and I walk away and everybody giggles because there's a naked man sitting on this guy's yeah. desk. <laughs> um, but we were talking about celebrating. We were talking about giving kids credit. Um, it means that thinker means so much more to kids than an A. And then when it's over, react, reflect, revise, and repeat. In fact, not even when it's over. When you're in the middle of it, react. Continually, you've got to be thinking about what's, what's happened. What's going on here? Is this working? Is this going where I want it to go? Sometimes it goes to a better place than you wanted it to go. And you have to be ready to react to that. And that means you have to think about it. And then, when the day's over, when the class is over, you really need to build in time. Yeah, right. As a retired guy, he can tell you that. I already don't have time. No, no. It, it makes life so much easier. You need some time. It can be when you're driving home or walking home. It can be when you're having lunch. It can be whatever. But you've got to reflect upon what happened on all those little things that you want to be better and then revise it. Right then, not a year from now. I don't know if, maybe you're different from me, but I can't remember what happened a year ago. But right then I can remember, oh, if, that, if I'd asked that question a different way, then it would have been better. Or if I'd asked a different question, I asked the wrong question. And then repeat. What do I mean repeat? I mean, so you've got your opener. Why do I call them openers? Because they open your mind to a new idea. My classroom consists of anywhere from three to 50 openers. My lesson plan consists of a bunch of problems that I am going to give kids to work on so they will learn. I'm going to offend some of you, but I can't conceive of what it means to give notes. I just, that's just astonishing to me. Why in the world would anybody ever give notes? The book didn't write it well enough? It's not in the book? Well then, write it up and hand it out. You can't waste time giving notes. Kids need that time to work on problems and talk to each other and think about it. So my lesson consists of give a problem, walk around, see where it goes, see what they learned, and then decide what the next problem is. And give them the next problem and walk around and see what they do, and then give them the next problem. Sometimes we need technology to do the problem. Sometimes we need patty paper. Sometimes we, whatever, whatever it takes to do the problem. But give a problem, work on it, draw conclusions from it, and then give them another problem. Sometimes the problem is group worthy, so sometimes it's one problem that takes two days. If it's that good. And the bottom line is, in the end, not did the kids like it? Was the class well organized? Was it quiet? Did they smile a lot? Do they say nice things to their parents about me? The bottom line is, 
What did they learn today that they didn't know when they walked in the room? And is it important? And if you can't answer those questions, then what you're doing needs to be reevaluated, in my opinion. Thank you. I'll let you go.